Welcome to the unboxing and brief review of the Thrunite Neutron 2-Way, the flashlight that's going to help guide you through the night. Okay, very quickly looking at the box first, they claim you get 255 ANSI lumens. Do you know what? Yeah, I'll go with that. Uses two regular AA cells, uh, which I will talk about in a bit more detail. Seven different outputs. It's got last mode memory, lowest moon moonlight mode of 0 0.09 lumens, and a hard type 3 anodized coating here. Um, info about the company and the R&D they do there. Nothing really else. Let's have a look at the flashlight. <laughs> Okay, so what do we got inside the box? They include a holster, which is nothing to write home about. Reasonable, does the job. Um, yeah, you got your uh, D-ring, no molly attachment, no uh, uh, Velcro-like system there. You do have a belt loop attachment here if you, if you want to use that, but uh, I don't use it. So that's that. You can get included two O-rings, no rubber boot cap, however. Um, in all honesty, I don't really think it's needed. And let's get the flashlight the right way around. You've got yourself the flashlight itself. And I've got to be honest, quite weighty. Um, now this has got two Sanyuen loop cells in here. In comparison with something like the Phoenix LD20, I would say this is a good ounce ounce and a half heavier i'll check the exact weight in a second now this weighs 3.2 ounces with two end loops in it i'm reckoning this is around about four 4.2 ounces you know something like that it is definitely way to your flashlight that will be down to its thicker uh construction and the fact that it is a a larger slightly larger flashlight now if i do a comparison with the mag light you can see, let's try and get them all kind of lined up and get them <clears throat> all brought into focus so we can see them a little bit better. There we go. So if I do that, you can see that uh, Maglite's the shortest with the LD20 being in the middle and the 3 Night Neutron 1A being the, the tallest there. But, you know, hey, what are you going to do? Okay, so the, you also get included... A little uh, high quality manual here. It's a sheet of very thin, very cheap paper. But uh, hey, as long as it gives us the information we need. So, okay, so the flashlight itself can take two AA batteries. Now, that's AA primary alkalines, regular old alkalines. It will take lithium primaries, not lithium rechargeables, I should say, just primaries there. It will take your regular old awesome end loops. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, I was wondering if it could take two 14500s. No, it's rated up to 4.2 volts. Um, so if you did want to run a lithium ion battery, I'm not sure how you could do the configuration, but it'll go from 0 0.9 to 4.2 volts. Um, so you're pretty much limited. I think, you know, if you put two Energizer Lithiums in there, you're pretty much at the max. I uh, don't know how you'd manage to get a, you know, a lithium power cell in there. But anyway, it's got a, a smooth reflector. No, it does not. It has an orange peel reflector that you can just kind of make out there. So that's wrong. Uh, stainless steel bezel ring. Yes, it does. And it's a like all th uh, Neutron series lights, it's a screw down bezel ring, slightly crenellated, which if you do place it head down and it happens to be on, you can make out that it is on. Is it tactical? Not really. I, those crenellations aren't large enough, they aren't sharp enough to do much in that respect. So it's six inches long, uh huh, uh, 0.87 inches in diameter. It weighs 75 grams without a battery. Um, okay, now the, the, uh, LD20 is 91 grams with two batteries. Um, so you guys can do the math, work out what this would be with two, li two, uh, energizers. Obviously, if you stick in two lithium batteries, it's going to be lighter. That's regular lithium, uh, five current regulated output levels and they are regulated I've, I can vouch for that although the regulation isn't super tight 
because when the uh, end loops start to run down, they, it starts to dim rather than just cutting off, which isn't a uh, very tight regulation there. Two flash modes, pretty standard strobe and SOS. You've got a titanium coated removable pocket clip, uh, which is good. You've got your reverse clicky switch here, which, oh man, this isn't really showing up too well, is it? Let's see if I can do this. There you go. Just make it out now. So you've got your reverse clicky, which is recessed, allowing you to tail stand the light. And let's see if I can get it to tail stand on camera. Bet you it won't. And I was wrong. It does tail stand. Okay, not the most stable, but it does work, and this table's kind of padded, it's softer, so it's not going to be super stable on this. There's a titanium-coated pocket clip. Uh, I haven't put it through any hard use, but it's still not got any scratches. It's fallen a few times, and uh, yeah, fine, and even the, the Type 3 hard anodized coating has held up really well. You can see the through night neutron marking there. Blank on the other, other side. Now, I like the way... They've done this pocket clip. Through Night have done this correctly because there's a flat portion under here. So when you're getting this in and out of cloth, you do not snag it on your clothes and you don't rip it up. And this knurling, 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 this knurling is pretty aggressive. You know, it's sharp. It gives you good grip. So if you were to have to slide your clothes through this, um, wouldn't be too good for them. It would not be too good at all. The pocket clip cannot be um repositioned so you can't put it on the front and you can't swivel it it's pretty much locked in there which actually being locked in there is not a bad thing and i wouldn't put this the other way around because i'm not going to be sticking it on my baseball cap it's too big too heavy for that purpose uh, what else do they say you've got square threads here uh let's see if i can show you the square threads do 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 try and focus on this so you can make it out Square cut threads or trapezoidal threads. The advantage of this is longer usability, less chance of crossing. I've got some silicon grease there. Uh, longer use, less chance of crossing the threads, and therefore it's just going to give you a longer uh, lifespan. And you can make out the O-ring just just here as well. And the O-ring is what helps to give it that IPX8 waterproofing which means you can dunk it in two meters of water 12 feet of water for up to 24 hours under static pressure and hopefully it should not leak hopefully uh what else do we have here we have yeah just reiterating something you've got type 3 hard anodized finish yep yep it's pretty standard sapphire coated lens now uh through night claim that this is dual sapphire coated so not only is it sapphire coated on the uh, sorry, it's dual anti-reflective, uh, reflective coated, so uh, you don't get the um, the reflections, but uh, sapphire is only on the outside, so what that means is you are less likely to scratch the glass lens, and it's tough in glass, I've dropped it, hasn't broken, so all good there. T60, 61, basically T6000 series aircraft grade aluminium. Nothing different there from normal, capable of standing up. Well, we just saw that. Serve as a candle, sure. Seven types of modes. So let's have a look at the modes now. So I'm not too sure what it's in. So let's, uh, oh, it's in. So let's put it into user defined mode. And now it is, no, I thought it was off there, but it isn't off. You can just, let's uh, let me, uh, focus in on this. There we go. It is on. Just. And it's so faint you can't make it out. That is <clears throat> the 0 0.09 lumen moonlight mode. Uh, very useful for your night vi preserving your night vision. If you're going around the house, if you're out doing reading star charts, doing astronomy or whatever. It's awesome for that purpose. Crank it up. So it's a soft press, and it takes it into the, oh, and I should have mentioned, at the not point, um, not 9 or not point 0.1 lumen mode, you get 260 hours runtime. Awesome. Crank it up, soft press it, that's taking you into the 9 lumen mode, which is 33 hours runtime. That's a reasonable m amount of runtime um, on 9 lumens. Problem is, that's not what I got. I got about 24 
I got a, mm, you know nearly ten hours less, nine hours less runtime using two envelopes. I'm guessing if I use the lithium, I'd probably get the thirty three hours, but yeah, whatever. Um, fifty lumen mode, six hours runtime. Ah, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I would say that's pretty comparable. I've ran this for a few hundred hours, and. <clears throat> The 50 lumen mode is the mode I use the most, and I would say it lasts six hours. That's actually quite quite accurate. Uh, soft press it again, takes you into the 120 lumen mode, which will give you 2.1 hours one time. Soft press it one last time. Uh, whilst it's in user defined mode, and you go into SOS mode, which will be about four hours one time, which is actually quite reasonable for two AA cells. Now, if I fully tighten the head, it will take me into turbo mode. And in turbo mode, we get the 260 ANSI lumens, um, which is a great, great amount of output. If I compare that to the Phoenix LD20 um, and put that into turbo mode, and it is. Look at the comparison. Okay, so you can see the exposure set in the camera. That is ridiculously different. Both are running in the loops. They're similar sized lights. They're both double A power cells. And this, yeah, 180 lumens. And I doubt that's ANSI. I think that's out the front. That's 260 lumens. Totally different. Totally different output. It's a slightly whiter light. It's a bigger uh, hot spot. It's a larger spill beam area. <clears throat> Some more usable light. Why is that? Why is there such a difference when they're both running the same power cell? It comes down to... Now let me just uh, focus in on this so we can actually see it better. Comes down to the LED. This is running the previous generation Cree XPGR5 with a smooth, ref smooth reflector. Sorry, I can't speak there. And this is running the latest generation Cree uh, T6 XML LED with uh, uh, an orange peel reflector. Much larger LED. Let's have a wee comparison. And you can see it's it's probably about four times the size, the actual chip itself. Um, maybe not quite as much as four times the size, but it's a far bigger die. And uh, for that reason, you are going to get a greater output. You, it's greater efficiency, less energy lost as heat. Um, and with the orange peel reflector, you get a larger spill beam. So all in all, it's a win-win scenario. Um, does that mean this is more expensive? No. It's actually pretty comparable in price to the LD20. Uh, would I recommend getting this over the LD20? Well, that comes down to your own use um, and what you need it for. <clears throat> I like both. I got both. I got the LD20 first, and then I got the 2A. If, if the situation was the same again, would I get the LD20 again? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. This gives me greater throw, believe it or not, than the 2A does. And that's primarily down to the fact that it's a, the XPGR5. It's a con more concentrated beam. Couple that with the smooth reflector, and this beam will go farther than this. Plus the fact that you can get a lot of accessories, like the lantern uh, diffuser tip, which will not fit this. Um, it, I thought it would. It's almost the same size, but it won't. So there we go there. Um, but anyway, back to this, we're not doing a comparison, we're just talking about the Neutron 2A. Um, yeah, so, great, great LED, modern LED, couple that with the orange pill reflector, uh, two AA cells, which you will get anywhere you want, you have yourself a winning light. In terms of cost, in terms of value, this is a high value light, very comparable to this, I Cannot remember what I paid for it. I think it's around about, obviously, in the UK, it's about 40, 45 pounds, there or thereabouts. I will have a link in the description. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been talking a lot today. I will have a link in the description uh, to the retailer in the UK that I recommend you get this from. In the US, you can get it from goinggear.com. Uh, lots of other retailers, but I uh, will have a link in the UK from who you can buy it. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend if you're in the market looking for a uh, two cell, uh, two double A cell uh, flashlight, I would recommend getting this. You get really good runtime, you get great output, you've got great versatility. It's a solid, well built light that's waterproof. And uh, that is a five minute review over and out. Thank you for watching, folks.